Hare Krishna everyone. Welcome back to the live studios here in the Darshan room of Radhi, Radha, Radha Kala Chandri Dham in Dallas, Texas. We're sitting in the Darshan, which used to be the Darshan Hall of Tamal Krishna Maharaj. And it's a very nice atmosphere, actually. There's been a lot of uh, exalted souls here, uh, hearing and chanting and managing and doing so many things. So uh, we welcome the atmosphere and we welcome all of you also out there in cyberspace. Uh, we hope you're having a very nice uh, Purnima and uh, we're delivering the Srimad Bhagavatam in this very auspicious day and if you deliver the Bhagavatam in this day you get unlimited returns. So <clears throat> let's hear the glorification of the Srimad Bhagavatam, shall we? From Sanatana Goswami uh, who heard from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu more than anyone else on the planet. Sarva Shastrabdi Pi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnadya Sarva Lokaika Drikprada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures singular fruit of all the Vedas rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kalidvandodita Ditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Welcome back to Stephen, the one of the Rasikas of the Dallas. Paramananda Pataya, Prema Varshakshadayate, Sarvada Savasevyaya, Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you, who were supremely blissful to read your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna himself. Mareka bando matsangin madguro man mahadana manishtadaka mad bhagya mad anandana mostute My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, please, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhuta dayin atini chuchata kara hanamun chen mam prem narit kantayospura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. So let us note this last verse. Uh, o exalter of the most fallen, no excuses. O Maharaj, I'm too fallen. No excuses. The Panchatattva and the followers, the genuine followers of the Panchatattva, they don't discriminate who is proper candidate, who is fit and who is not. They just give this pure love in the form of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So we no, have no excuse to become ecstatic when we hear the Bhagavatam. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya It's kind of fine. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya so, we're on the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 8, which is called Questions by King Prikshit. Now, there's, always, there's already been questions, the main one, what to, what to do, what does a person do who's going to die. 
But now, as Shukadeva Goswami goes deeper and deeper into the subject, uh, King Prikshit is stimulating the, the conversation so that it will go deeper by his super excellent questions. So the Bhagavatam is so wonderful that it, it, it even teaches us how to ask in order to get full and deepest answers possible to all questions. Okay, we're beginning with text six. <clears throat> A pure devotee of the Lord whose heart has once been cleansed by the process of devotional service never relinquishes the lotus feet of Lord Krishna for they fully satisfy him as a traveler is satisfied at home after a troubled journey. Purport. One who is not a pure devotee of the Supreme Lord Krishna is not completely cleansed in the heart. But a perfectly cleansed person never quits the devotional service of the Lord. In discharging such devotional service as ordered by Brahmaji to Narada in the preaching of Srimad Bhagavatam, Sometimes a representative of the Lord engaged in preaching work meets various so-called difficulties. This was exhibited by Lord Nityananda when he delivered the two fallen souls, Jagai and Madhai. Similarly, Lord Jesus Christ was crucified by the non-believers. But such difficulties are very gladly suffered by the devotees in preaching because in such activities, although apparently very severe, the devotees of the Lord feel transcendental pleasure because the Lord is satisfied. Prahlad Maharaj suffered greatly, but still he never forgot the lotus feet of the Lord. This is because a pure devotee of the Lord is so purified in his heart that he cannot leave the shelter of the Lord of Lord Krishna in any circumstances. There is no self-interest in such service. The process of culturing knowledge by the jnanis and the bodily gymnastics of the yogis are ultimately given up by their respective performers. But a devotee of the Lord cannot give up the service of the Lord, for he is ordered by his spiritual master. Pure devotees like Narada and Nityananda Prabhu take up the order of the spiritual master as the sustenance of life. They do not mind what becomes of their, the future of their lives. They take the matter very seriously as the order comes from the higher authority, from the representative of the Lord or from the Lord himself. The example set herein is very appropriate. A traveler leaves home to search for wealth in far distant places, sometimes in the forest and sometimes on the ocean and sometimes on hilltops. Certainly, there are many troubles for the traveler when he is in such unknown places. But all such troubles are at once mitigated as soon as the sense of his family affection is remembered. And as soon as he returns home, he forgets all such troubles on the way. A pure devotee of the Lord is exactly in a family tie with the Lord and therefore he is undeterred in discharging his duty in a full affectionate tie with the Lord. Text 7 <clears throat> O oh, learned Brahmana, the transcendental spirit soul is different from the material body. Does he acquire the body accidentally or by some cause? Will you kindly explain this? For it is known to you. 
purport. Maharaj Parikshit, being a typical devotee, is not satisfied by simply confirming the importance of hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam from the representative of Brahmaji in disciplic succession. But he is still more anxious to establish the philosophical basis of Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the science of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And as such, all questions that, that may arise in the mind of a serious student must be cleared by the statements of the authority. A person on the path of devotional service may inquire from his spiritual master all about the spiritual position of God and the living beings. From the Bhagavad Gita, as well as from the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is known that qualitatively the Lord and the living beings are one. The living being in the conditioned state of material existence is subjected to many transmigrations by continuous changing of the material body. But what are the causes of the material development of the part and parcel of the Lord? But what are the causes of the material embodiment of the part and parcel of the Lord? Maharaj Pariksit inquires about this very important matter for the benefit of all classes of candidates on the path of self-realization and devotional service to the Lord. Indirectly, it is confirmed that the Supreme Being, the Lord, makes no such material changes of body. He is spiritually whole, with no difference between his body and his soul, unlike the conditioned soul. The liberated living beings who associate with the Lord in person are also exactly like the Lord. Only the conditioned souls awaiting liberation are subject to a change of bodies. How was the process first begun? In the process of devotional service, the first step is to take shelter of the spiritual master and then inquire from the spiritual master all about the process. This inquiry is essential for immunity to all kinds of offenses on the path of devotional service. Even if one is fixed in devotional service, like Maharaj Pariksit, he must still inquire from the realized spiritual master all about this. In other words, the spiritual master must also be well-versed and learned so that he may be able to answer all these inquiries from the devotees. Thus, one who is not well-versed in the authorized scriptures and not able to answer all such relevant, all such relevant inquiries should not pose as a spiritual master for the matter of material gain. It is illegal to become a spiritual master if one is unable to deliver the disciple. Text 8. If the Supreme Personality of Godhead, from, who, from whose abdomen the lotus stem sprouted, is possessed of a gigantic body according to his own caliber and measurement, then what is the specific difference between the body of the Lord and those of common living entities? These are the questions of Maharaj Pariksit. Purport. One should note how Maharaj Pariksit intelligently put questions before his spiritual master for scientific understanding of the transcendental body of the Lord. It has been described in many places before this that the Lord assumed a gigantic body, namely that of Karnadakashai Vishnu, from whom whose from whose hair pores innumerable universes were generated. The body of Garbhadakashai Vishnu is described as sprouting the lotus stem, stem within which all the planets and of the universe remain, and at the top of the stem is the lotus flower on which Lord Brahma is born. In the creation of the material world, the Supreme Lord undoubtedly assumes a gigantic body. And living entities also get bodies, big or small, according to necessity. For example, an elephant gets a gigantic body according to its needs, and so also an ant gets its body according to its needs. Similarly, 
if the personality of Godhead assumes a gigantic body to accommodate the universes or the planets of a particular universe, there is no difference in the principle of assuming or accepting a particular type of body in terms of necessity. A living being and the Lord cannot be distinguished simply by the difference in the magnitude of the body. So the answer depends on the specific significance of the body of the Lord, as distinguished from the body of the common living being. Text 9. Brahma, who was not born of a material source, but of the lotus flower coming out of the navel of the abdomen of the Lord, is the creator of all those who are materially born. Of course, by the grace of the Lord, Brahma was able to see the form of the Lord. Purport. The first living creature, Brahma, is called Aja, because he did not take his birth from the womb of a mother materially born. He was directly born from the bodily expansion of the lotus flower of the Lord. Thus, it is not readily understandable whether the body of the Lord and that of Brahma are of the same quality or different. This must also be clearly understood. One thing is, however, certain. Brahma was completely dependent on the mercy of the Lord because after his birth, he could create living beings by the Lord's grace only, and he could see the form of the Lord. Whether the form seen by Brahma is of the same quality as that of Brahma is a bewildering question. And Maharaj Parikshit wanted to get clear answers from Srila Sugadeva Goswami. So here we have the picture. He's asking questions to Brahma, who is uh, I'm sorry, Parikshit asking questions uh, of Sugadeva Goswami. And now we're going to hear his answers, which are questions that were answered to higher authorities to get the answer to the question. And this is the way of, of receiving knowledge, spiritual knowledge. It's not that we can manufacture this knowledge out of our minds. Therefore, when sincere uh, Prikshit Maharaj so sincerely inquiring properly, proper questions, to the proper authority, the authority immediately quotes from a higher authority who answered the same question. And the Bhagavatam is made up of this uh, type of question and answering. So as I said before, we can learn not only the answers, but we can learn how to question, you know, to be able to understand the answers properly, to have the right mentality to receive the answers properly. Text 10. Please also explain the personality of Godhead who lies, in the, who, who lies in every heart as the super soul and who is the Lord of all energies but is untouched by his external energy. Purport. Undoubtedly the form of the Lord who was seen by Brahma must be transcendental. Otherwise, how could he simply look upon the creative energy without being touched? It is understood also that the same Purusha lies in the heart of every living entity. This also requires proper explanation. Text 11. O learned Brahmana, it was formally explained that all the planets of the universe with their respective governors are situated in the different parts of the gigantic body of the Virat Purusha, or the universal form of the Lord. I have also heard that the different planetary systems themselves constitute the gigantic body of the Virat Purusha. But what is their actual position? Will you please, will you please explain that? Text 12. Also, Please explain the duration of time between creation and annihilation 
and the duration of other subsidiary creations, as well as the nature of time, indicated by the words past, present, and future. Also, please explain the duration and measurement of life of the different living beings, known as the dem demigods, the human beings, and so on, in different planets of the universe. Purport. Past, present, and future are different features of time to indicate the duration of life for the universe and all its paraphernalia, including the different living beings in different planets. Text 13. O purest of the Brahmanas, please also explain the cause of the different durations of time, both short and long, as well as the beginning of time following the course of action. Text 14. Then again, kindly describe how the proportionate accumulation of the reactions resulting from the different modes of material nature act upon the desiring living being, promoting or degrading him among the different species of life, beginning from the demigods down to the most insignificant creatures. So now he's asking about in every, in, in every action, for every action in the material world, there's a reaction. So imagine all of these living beings all acting, interacting with themselves, with the energy, with the nature, and the combined reactions is bound to get more and more and more and more complex. And now we see the result in the Kali Yuga. The reactions are so uh, confounding that hardly anyone has any idea how to solve the problems that are being caused by their action to try to solve the problems. Therefore, this is a very deep question. I'm going to read it again. Then again, kindly describe how the proportionate accumulation of the reactions resulting from the different modes of nature, material nature, act upon the desiring living being, promoting or de degrading him among the different species of life, beginning from the demigods down to the most insignificant creatures. This question is so profound, it's, it's asking what's going on here in this whole material universe. Purport. The actions and reactions of all works in the material modes of nature, either in the minute form or in the gigantic form, are accumulated. And thus the result of such accumulated actions and reactions of karma or work become manifested in the same proportion. How such actions and reactions take place, what the different procedures are, and in what proportion they act are all subject matters of Maharaj Pariksit's inquiries from the great Brahmana, Sugadeva Goswami. Life in the higher planets, known as the abodes of the denizens of heaven, is obtained not by the strength of spacecraft, as is now being contemplated by the inexperienced scientists, but by works done in the mode of goodness. Even on the very planet we are, where we are now living, there are restrictions upon the entrance of foreigners into a country where the citizens are more prosperous. For example, the American government has many restrictions for the entrance of foreigners from less prosperous countries. Sounds familiar. The reason is that the Americans do not wish to memo to, to Trump. The reason is that the Americans do not, do not wish to share their prosperity with any foreigner who has not qualified himself as a citizen of America. And now it's getting harder and harder to get that citizenship. Similarly, the same mentality is prevailing in every other planet where there are more intelligent living beings residing. The higher planetary living conditions are all in the mode of goodness and anyone desiring to enter the higher planets 
like the Moon, Sun, and Venus, must qualify thoroughly by activity in complete goodness. Maharaj Prikic's inquiries are on the basis of proportionate actions of goodness, which qualify one in this planet to be promoted to the highest regions of the universe. Even on this planet of our present residence, one cannot achieve a good position within the social order without being qualified with proportionate good work. One cannot forcibly sit on the chair of a high court judge without being qualified for the post. Similarly, I mean, it's amazing. I'll read that again. Similarly, <laughs> one cannot forcibly sit in the chair of the high court judge without being qualified for the post. Similarly, one cannot enter into the higher planetary systems without being qualified by good works in this life. Persons addicted to the habits of passion and ignorance have no chance of entering the higher planetary systems simply by an electronic mechanism. According to the statement of the Bhagavad Gita 925, persons trying to qualify themselves for promotion to the higher heavenly planets can go there. Similarly, persons trying for the Pitrilokas can go there. Similarly, persons trying to improve the conditions on this earth can also do that. And persons who are engaged in going back home, back to Godhead, can achieve that result. The various actions and reactions of work in the mode of goodness are generally known as pious work with devotional service, culture of knowledge with devotional service, mystic powers with devotional service, and at last, devotional service unmixed with any other varieties of goodness. This unmixed devotional service is transcendental and is called para-bhakti. It alone can promote a person to the transcendental kingdom of God. Such a transcendental kingdom is not a myth, but, it is, a, it is, a, but is as factual as the moon. One must have transcendental qualities to understand the kingdom of God and God himself. Text 15. O best of the Brahmanas, please also describe how the creation of the globes throughout the universe and the four directions of the heavens, the sky, the planets, the stars, the mountains, the rivers, the seas, and the islands, as well as their different kinds of inhabitants, take place. Purport. The inhabitants of different varieties of land, etc., are differently situated, and not all of them are equal in all respects. The inhabitants of the land are different from the inhabitants of the water or the sky, and similarly, the inhabitants of the different planets and stars in the sky are also different from one another. By the laws of the Lord, no place is vacant, but the creatures of one particular planet a place are different from those of another pl of other places. Even in human society, the inhabitants of the jungles or the deserts are different from those of the cities and villages. They are so made according to different qualities of the modes of nature. Such adjustment by the laws of nature is not blind. There is a great plan behind the, the arrangement. Maharaj Pariksit requests the great sage Shukadev Goswami to explain all these subjects authoritatively in accordance with proper understanding. Text 16. Also, please describe the inner and outer space of the universe by specific divisions, as well as the character and activities of the great souls, and also the characteristics of the different classifications of the castes and orders of social life. Purport. Maharaj Pariksit is a typical devotee of Lord Krishna, and as such he is anxious to know the complete significance of the creation of the Lord. 
He wants to know the inner and outer space of the universal form. It is quite fitting for the real searcher of knowledge to know about all, all about this. Those who are of the opinion that the devotees of the Lord are satisfied with mere sentiments can find in the inquiries of Maharaj Pariksit good lessons as to how inquisitive a pure devotee is to know things in their true perfection. The modern scientist is unable to know about the inner space of the universal horizon and what to speak of the space which covers the universe. Brikshit Maharaj is not satisfied with only material knowledge. He is inquisitive about the character and activities of the great souls, the devotees of the Lord. The glories of the Lord and the glories of his devotees combined together comprise the complete knowledge of Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Krishna showed his mother the complete universal creation within his mouth, while she, completely charmed by her son, wanted to look inside the mouth of the Lord just to see how much earth the child had eaten. <laughs> by the grace of the Lord, the devotees are able to see everything in the universe within the mouth of the Lord. The very idea of the scientific divisions of four classes of human society and four orders of life is also inquired about with herewith on the basis of individual personal quality. The four divisions are exactly like the four divisions of one's personal body. The parts and parcels of the body are not different from the body, but by themselves they are only parts. That is the significance of the whole scientific system of four castes and four spiritual orders. The value of such scientific divisions of human society can be ascertained only in terms of the proportionate development of devotional service to the Lord. Any person employed in government service, including the president, is part and parcel of the entire government. Everyone is a government servant, but no one is the government himself. Memo to Trump. That is the position of all living entities in the government of the Supreme Lord. No one can artificially claim the supreme position of the Lord, but everyone is meant to serve the purpose of the supreme whole. Text 17. Please explain all the different ages <clears throat> in the duration of the creation and also the duration of such ages. Also tell me about the different activities of the different incarnations of the Lord in different ages. I mean, these questions, you know, are then answered throughout the whole Bhagavatam. These are the questions that form the basis of the rest of the Bhagavatam. Purport. Lord Krishna is the original personality of Godhead and all the incarnations of the Supreme Lord, although non different from Him, are emanations from the Supreme. Maharaj Pariksit inquired from the great and learned uh, sage Shukadev Goswami about the different activities of such incarnations so that the incarnation of the Lord might be confirmed by His activities in the authoritative scriptures. Maharaj Pariksit was not to be carried away by the sentiments of the common man to accept an incarnation of the Lord very cheaply. Instead, he wished to accept the incarnation of the Lord by symptoms mentioned in the Vedic literatures and confirmed by an acharya like Shukadeva Goswami. So this is the importance of the Vedas. They, they explain the answers to all these questions which can't be answered by our present senses and intelligence because they're beyond our perception. 
The Lord descends by His internal energy without any obligation to the laws of material nature, and thus His activities are also uncommon. The specific activities of the Lord are mentioned, and one should know that the activities of the Lord and the Lord Himself are identical due to being on the absolute plane. Thus, to hear the activities of the Lord means to associate with the Lord directly. And association with the Lord directly means purification from material contamination. <laughs> I'll read that again. This is too good. Um, the specific activities of the Lord are mentioned and one should know that the activities of the Lord and the Lord himself are identical due to being on the absolute plane. Thus, to hear the activities of the Lord means to associate with the Lord directly. And association with the Lord directly means purification from material contamination. We have already discussed this point in the previous canto. Text 18. Please also explain what may generally be the common religious affiliation of human beings, as well as their specific occupational duties in religion, the classification of the social orders, including, including the administrative royal orders and the religious principles for one who may be in distress. Purport. The common religion of all classes of human beings, regardless of whosoever and whatsoever one may be, is devotional service. I just heard Prabhupada say today that there is only one God and therefore there can only be one process of reaching Him. D pure devotional service. It may come in different names and different whatever, but the process has to be the same to reach the, the one Supreme Personality of God, devotional service. Therefore, even in the, sec the religions who have that have become sectarian now, but didn't start out as sectarian by the original preceptor's teachings, the original preceptor's teachings don't talk about sectarian religion. You never hear the word Hindu in the Vedas. You never hear the word Christianity in the teachings of Jesus Christ. So, uh, the common religion of all classes of human beings, regardless of whosoever and whatsoever one may be, is devotional service. Even the animals may be included in devotional service to the Lord. And the best example is set by Sri Vajrangaji, or Hanuman, the great devotee of Lord Sri Rama. As we have already discussed, even the aborigines and cannibals can also be engaged in the devotional service of the Lord if they happen to be under the guidance of a genuine devotee of the Lord. In the Skanda Purana, there is a narration that a hunter in the jungle became the most enlightened devotee of the Lord by the guidance of Sri Nardamuni. Therefore, devotional service to the Lord can be equally shared by every living being. Religious affiliation in terms of different countries and cultural circumstances is obviously not the same, not the common religion of the human being. I'll read that again. Religious, religious affiliation in terms of different countries and cultural circumstances is obviously not the common religion of the human being. Rather, the basic principle is devotional service. Even if, a, even if a particular type of religious principle does not recognize the supremacy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the followers still have to obey the disciplinary principles laid down by a particular leader. Such a leader of a religious sect is never the supreme leader because such a circumstantial leader comes to the position of leadership after undergoing some penance. 
The Supreme Personality of Godhead does not, however, require to be under disciplinary action to become leader, as we see in the activities of Lord Krishna. The occupational duties of the castes and the orders of society following the principles of livelihood also depend on the principle of devotional service. In the Bhagavad Gita it is stated that a person can achieve the highest perfection of life simply by awarding the results of his occupational duty unto the devotional service of the Lord. People following the principles of devotional service to the Lord can never be put into difficulty, and thus there cannot be any question of apadharma or religion in distress. In other words, if it brings you distress, it's not religion. As will be explained in this book by the greatest authority, Srila Sukadeva Goswami, there is no religion save and accept the devotional service to the Lord, of the Lord, though this may be presented in different forms. Text 19. So this book is so open-minded, it never condemns one thing or another, but it describes the principle of devotional service behind all the uh, different religions. We just read just a few, few uh, purports ago how Lord Jesus Christ was suffering because of the non-devotees tempted to crucify him. In many places like that, he appears on the pages of the purports of these verses by Prabhupada. Okay, text 20. Kindly explain all about the element, elementary principles of creation, the number of such elementary, el elementary principles, their causes and their development, and also the process of devotional service and the method of mystic powers. Text 20. What are the opulences of the great mystics and what is their ultimate realization? How does the perfect mystic become detached from the subtle astral body? What is the basic knowledge of the Vedic literatures, including the branches of history and the supplementary Puranas? Purport. The Yogeshwara, or the master of mystic powers, can exhibit eight kinds of wonders of perfection by becoming smaller than the atom or lighter than a feather getting anything and everything he desires, going anywhere and everywhere he likes, creating even, even a planet in the sky, etc. There are many Yogeshwaras having different proficiencies in these wonderful powers, and the topmost of all of them is Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is the greatest yogi, and he can perform such wonderful things, far beyond the ordinary living beings. The devotees of the Lord the Supreme Personality of Godhead, do not directly practice the process of mystic powers, but by the grace of the Lord, his devotee can defeat even the great, a great Yogeshwara like Durvasa Muni, who picked a quarrel with Maharaj Ambarish and wanted to show the wonderful achievements of his mystic powers. Maharaj Ambarish was a pure devotee of the Lord and thus without any effort on his part, the Lord saved him from the wrath of Yogeshwara, Durvasa Muni, and the latter was obliged to beg pardon from the king. Similarly, at the time of Draupadi's precarious position, when she was attacked by the Kurus who wanted to see her naked in the op open assembly of the royal order, the Lord saved her from being stripped by supplying an unlimited length of sari to cover her. And Draupadi knew nothing of mystic powers. Therefore the devotees are also Yogeshwaras by the unlimited power of the Lord. Just as a child is powerful by the strength of the parents. 
Children do not try to protect themselves by any artificial means, but are saved by the mercy of the parents. Maharaj Prikshit inquired from the learned Brahmana Shukadeva Goswami about the ultimate destination of such great mystics or how they attain such extraordinary powers by their own efforts or by the grace of the Lord. He inquired also about their detachment from these subtle and gross material bodies. He inquired also about the purports of the Vedic knowledge. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita 1515, the whole purport of all the Vedas is to know the Supreme Personality of Godhead and thus become a transcendental loving servant of the Lord. And we'll, we'll read one more. Text 21. Please explain unto me how the living beings are generated, how they are maintained, and how they are annihilated. Also tell me what is advantageous and what is disadvantageous for discharging devotional service unto the Lord. What are the Vedic rituals and injunctions of the supplementary uh, Vedic rites? And what are the procedures of religion, economic development, and sense gratification? Purport. The word, I mean, I just heard Prabhupada say recently that if you study the Bhagavatam properly and learn it, actually learn it, you will have the equivalent of 10 PhDs because you'll know all subjects thoroughly and how to apply them in life. Just the questions in themselves give you a scope of what this book is talking about. Just the questions. Purport. The word samplava, in the sense of perfect, perfect means, is employed to denote the discharging of devotional service. And pratisankrama means just the opposite, or that which destroys the progress of devotional service. One who is firmly situated in the devotional service of the Lord can very easily execute the functions of conditional life. Living the conditional life is just like plying a boat in the middle of the ocean. One is completely at the mercy of the ocean, and at every moment there is every chance of being drowned in the ocean by slight agitation. If the atmosphere is all right, the boat can ply very easily, undoubtedly. But if there is some storm, fog, wind, or cloud, there is every possibility of being drowned in the ocean. No one can control the whim, whims of the ocean. However, one may, however, one may be, be, be however, one may be, be, be materially well equipped. I'll read that again. That's a tongue twister. No one can control the whims of the ocean. However, one may be materially well, well equipped. One who has crossed the oceans by ship may have sufficient experience of such dependence upon the mercy of the ocean, but one can ply over the ocean of material existence by the grace of the Lord very easily, without any fear of storm or fog. It all depends on the will of the Lord. No one can help if there is some unfortunate danger in the state of conditional existence, conditional life. The devotees of the Lord, however, cross the ocean of material existence without anxiety because a pure devotee is always protected by the Lord. The Lord gives special attention to his devotees in their activities within material conditional life. Therefore, everyone should take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord and be a pure devotee of the Lord by all means. One should know, therefore, from the expert spiritual master, the advantageous and disadvantageous conditions 
for discharging devotional service. Just as, the Mahar, just as Maharaj Pariksit asked his spiritual master, Srila Shukadeva Goswami. According to the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the science of devotional service, one should not eat more than what he requires to maintain body and soul together. Vegetable diets and milk are sufficient for maintaining of the maintenance of, of the human body, and therefore one has no need to eat anything more to satisfy the palate. One should also not accumulate money to become puffed up in the material world. One should earn his livelihood easily and honestly, for it is better to become a coolie for an honest livelihood than to become a great man in society by hook and crook. There is no harm if one becomes the richest man in the world by honest dealings, but one should not sacrifice the honest means of livelihood simply to accumulate wealth. Such an endeavor is harmful to devotional service. One should not talk nonsense. A devotee's business is to earn the favor of the Lord. Therefore, a devotee should always glorify the Lord in his wonderful creation. A devotee should not decry the creation of the Lord, defying him by saying that he has created a false world. The world is not false. Factually, we have to take so many things from the world for our maintenance. So how can we say that the world is false? Similarly, how can one think of the Lord as being without form? How can one become formless and, and at the same time have all intelligence and consciousness, direct and indirect? So there are many things for a pure devotee to learn, and he should learn them perfectly from a bona fide personality like Sukadeva Goswami. The favorable conditions for discharging devotional service are that one should be very enthusiastic in serving the Lord. <clears throat> the Lord in his form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted the cult of devotional service to the Lord to be preached all over the world, in every nook and corner. And therefore a pure devotee's duty is to discharge this order as far as possible. Every devotee should be very enthusiastic, not only in performing his da daily rituals of devotional service, but in trying to preach the cult peacefully by following in the footsteps of Lord Chaitanya. If he is not superficially successful in such an attempt, he should not be deterred from the discharge of his duty. Success or failure have no meaning for a pure devotee because he is a soldier in the field. Preaching the cult of devotional service is something like, like, like declaring war against materialistic life. There are different kinds of materialists such as the fruity workers, the mental speculators, the mystic jugglers, and so many others, all of them are against the existence of Godhead. They would declare that they themselves, they, that they would declare that they are themselves God, although in every step and in every action they are dependent on the mercy of the Lord. Therefore, a pure devotee may not associate with such gangs of atheists. A strong devotee of the Lord will not be misled by such atheistic propaganda of the non-devotees. But a neophyte devotee should be very cautious about them. A devotee should see to the right discharge of devotional service under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master and should, not stick, and should stick not only to the formalities. Under the direction of the bona fide spiritual master, one should see how much service is being executed 
and not simply in the matter of rituals. A devotee should not hanker after anything, but he should be satisfied with things that may automatically come to him by the will of the Lord. That should be the principle of a devotional life. And all these principles are easily learned under the guidance of a spiritual master like Shukadeva Goswami. Maharaj Prikshit inquired from Shukadev correctly and what should follow his example. Maharaj Prikshit inquired about the process of creation, maintenance, and destruction of the material world, the process of Vedic rituals, and the method of executing pious activities in terms of the supplementary Vedas like the Puranas and the Mahabharata. As explained before, the Mahabharata is the history of ancient Indi India, and so also are the Puranas. Pious acts are prescribed in the supplementary Vedas, Smritis, which specifically mentioned digging tanks and wells for the water supply for the people in general, to plant trees on the public roads, to construct public temples and places of worship of God, to establish places of charity, where the poor destitutes can be provided with foodstuffs and similar activities are called putra, purta. Similarly, the process of fulfilling the natural desires for sense gratification was also inquired ab about by the king for the benefit of all concerned. Hare Krishna. So we'll stop our reading there. the questions of Maharaj <coughs> Parikshit to Shukadeva Goswami. Now if there's any uh, points that have been uh, well, that's that really that Wait, David Pras is telling us something that struck him. Yeah, he's, he's, he's saying the variety of the questions include everything. And he feels like Maharaj Prikshit was asking these questions for the benefit of everyone, really. And that's the nature of a pure devotee. His interest is in helping others. That's his only interest. Prabhupada used to say, I just came here to make you happy. When they, you know, he's coming in in an airplane or some airport or something, they made an arrangement for him to sit and there's some press conference or something. Why did you come here? I've come to, I've come to remind you of what you've forgotten so that you can become happy. That's it. That was his only goal in life. Do we have anything from the, so far from the uh, cyberspace? Robert said, what's in your wallet? What's in my wallet? Well, uh, I've got my, I've got my uh, uh, trusted traveler card for the UK and I'll see you tomorrow or the next morning rather I have a question Dr. Matt's going to ask a question Does, is this material world is this material world going to last going to last forever forever how long is how long is there a certain time limit people have of coming back or death to birth uh, no there's no limit it's unlimited yeah but there's a process of, as it mentioned in one of the verses we, were, we, we read tonight, there's, a, there's different levels of annihilation in terms of time and space, present, past, present, and future. When Brahma uh, goes to sleep at night, then he's the original created being, Lord Brahma. We heard that. And his day and night are very long compared to what we think of, of time in our, in our dimension or in our uh, relative position. And uh, so at the end of his day and he goes to sleep, he doesn't go into an ordinary sleep. He goes into kind of a trance. It's like sleep. And during that time, uh, a good part of the universe is actually inundated by water. 
And every time he gets up, like when we get up, we got to what? Do your body maintenance, brush your teeth, put on your clothes, put on your tea lock. You know, he has to recreate every morning when he gets up a certain part of the universe. So, I mean, you can be Brahma. It's not very many souls get Brahma relative to the number of souls, but you got to be prepared to have a full day, busy morning. A busy morning. So that's one kind of devastation. Then there's a certain number of manus in a day of Brahma. I think it's 14 or something like that. And at each, the end of each one of their reigns, there's also some kind of annihilation. And then when Brahma dies, and he dies also, you know, his, in his time, 100 years, approximately. And it's 311 trillion, 80 billion years. And then, at that time, the whole thing gets wound back up into the body of Mahavishnu. So the material net energy is still there, but it's unmanifested. The souls are still there, but they're unmanifested. They're, in, they're withdrawn into the body of the Lord. And then, when the unfulfilled desires of the souls who got brought back into the body of the Lord, who were not eligible to go back to the spiritual world by pure devotional service, by coming to the stage of pure devotional service at the end of their life, then they all get wound back up into the body. And their unfulfilled desires inside the body of the Lord agitate the Lord to fulfill them. That's the cause of the creation. So he yes, and he recreates the whole thing just to give them another chance. And the number of years that they stay, you know, inside the body of Vishnu before it comes out again—that's a long, that's a long time. Yeah, the, the, when the Lord breathes out, that's a whole cosmic duration. 311 trillion years. One out-breath and one in-breath. We have a question. We have a question from cyberspace. From uh, Rati Manjari. Rati, Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna, Sri Guru Maharaj, if I may ask a question not directly related to the reading. You speak often on how we are, in, uh, how we are breaking the laws of nature rather than about acting simply. I, I like the word, could you explain how break, drinking alcohol is breaking the laws of nature? It seems that it is mostly a personal transgression. The laws of nature are, based, are, are meant to be followed by individuals as well as collective groups of people. So it is abuse. It's, a, it's, it's personal abuse of your own body. Your body doesn't belong to you. The body doesn't belong to us. If it belonged to us, we could keep it. But we can't keep it. Rati, you're still young. You may not be as young as you were, but you're still young compared to this old man over here and to others even younger. So the body doesn't belong to us. And there's laws of nature which govern how to keep the body proper in devotional service. Actually, if you want to get right down to the bare bones of the definition of what sin is or what against going against the laws of nature are, it means to do anything that is not for the pleasure of the Lord. But what happens is the individual soul, because he's got a little tiny bit of independence, he begins to think that he can do those things without hurting anyone else and therefore they're not sinful or they're not against the laws of nature. I mean, after all, the laws of nature are to please me, aren't they? No. The laws of nature are meant to please you and also to punish you and also to rectify you and, and, and reclaim you. That's the original idea behind prisons. 
They're not meant to torture people and make profit like they are now and keep it, you know, get as many people in there as possible so that we can enjoy you know, causing them to, to, to be tortured and also get money. They're supposed to be reclaimed so they can come back into being you know, uh, productive mem members of society. So there's, a, there's, in other words, there was, there's responsibility. And each living being has responsibility. The animals don't have the same level of responsibility. They don't have the same degree of freedom, you know, to do the things that human beings can do, to search for truth, develop the technology. You know, you don't see any frogs, you know, with, you know, beat, beat headphones, you know, except in the cartoons and the, and the commercials. What's in your wallet? I like this too much. I'm going to milk it for all it's worth. Does that answer the question? No response yet. Okay, kids, we are going to fly out tomorrow. Matt and myself, she says thanks with a thumbs up. Rati, Hare Krishna, we'll see you soon. Hare Bo. That's all, folks, for tonight. Thank you very much. We're learning so much about the universe just by listening to the questions of Maharaj Pariksha. They're so profound that we're learning about the universe just by listening to the questions. What to speak of the rest of the Bhagavatam? And that's what we should be doing. We should be hearing the whole Bhagavatam, cover to cover. Wait, Anna's got a question. The machine. We call her the question machine. Go ahead. Anna. G. I think she's back. No, she says, never mind. Really? It's too late. She's so... Honey, you're so... What's the word? Uh, Considerate. You're so considerate. Thank you very much. I do need to go and take rest early. So that, yeah, we're going to be traveling a long journey tomorrow. So thank you very much. And I'll be hearing... Now, one last announcement. Tomorrow night we won't be reading because we'll be on the plane. And uh, But the next day, Wednesday, we'll be reading from 6.30, same time, but will be in the UK, which is six hours ahead. So if you want to tune in live, then you have to listen at 12.30 in the afternoon. Hare Krishna. And it'll be like that for three weeks. So once again, thank you all the devotees in Houston, you know, for, the, the, for your wonderful ears and your wonderful hearts and the wonderful displays of devotion that I witnessed with my own eyes and heart. Keep up the, the vibes. Keep the sound going. Keep it going. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Shri Shukadeva Goswami ki jai. Shri Maharaj Prikshit ki jai. Samabeda Bhakta Brinda ki jai. Gaur Premanande. Hari Hari Bo.